Hello, yes, Joe Pierce's Faustian Pact. That's right. After reading Joe Pierce's uh, book, Race with the Devil, From Racial Hatred to Racial Love, and also after reading Nick Griffin's Attempted Murder, I am firmly convinced that Joe Pierce rolled and sold his soul to the devil, Beelzebub himself, Jerry Gable. I believe Joe Pierce crumbled in jail and he sold his soul to the devil, literally. But let's just get back to Joe Pierce's book. In his book, he talks about fumbling with these rosary beads and being drawn to Catholicism. And when asked by the prison authorities what religion uh, he is, he replies saying a Catholic. When those that uh, remember Joe Pierce, was, he was involved in militant Protestantism. So he couldn't explain this to himself, but it, it was an overwhelming feeling and power over him that he, he just couldn't get rid of. And in turn starts then uh, converting to Catholicism and reading Catholic authors, books, Hiller, Bellick and G.K. Chesterton and all the rest of it. Now, firstly, we have to assume the Rosary Bead stuff and all that like is true and what Joe Pierce is saying is true. It could be part of the scam, the farce, I don't know, right? But let's assume that it's all true. What that tells about him is that he was obviously a very, very weak individual and under pressure, crumbled and eventually rolled to the enemy. You see, people like Joe Pierce and Mark Collis, he's literally identical. They've been looking for something in this world and unfortunately they've found us first. But when it hasn't been the bed of roses they thought or wanted it to be, and it's been the complete opposite, under the stress, under the pressure, they've crumbled and rolled to the enemy. Uh, that's what I believe has happened. Uh, Joe Pierce, I believe while in jail, he's either contacted Searchlight or they've contacted him, it doesn't really matter. And when he got out of jail, I heard from good source, the first person he met was Jerry Gable, asked for his life back. But first of all, he had to bring down Nick Griffin's National Front. So, Joe Pierce, Andrew Bronze, Steve Brady, all Searchlight assets. Uh, others, Martin Wingfield, he's not, he was just an ideological opponent of Griffin. Ian Anderson. Griffin uh, describes him as an incompetent and an alcoholic. That may be the case because they don't know the man. Other veteran nationalists here in Liverpool have said otherwise, but either way, I don't believe Anderson was a wrong gun, like Martin Wingfield most certainly isn't, right? Um, but I believe Bronze, Brady and Pierce were wrong guns, right? And after Pierce was released from jail, he had one last job to do before he got his life back and was spirited off to America where he's been left alone. Now, don't look into that too deep. Martin Webb's that are attacking him. All the spies attack one another. Julie Lake attacks Jack Sen, right? So take the notice of that. There'll be a reason for that, trust me. So I believe that's what's happened. I believe Joe Pierce has crumbled. Um, he's then... I don't know. He may have been drawn to, to Catholicism. He may have been fumbling with the rose beads. I don't know. But either way, I believe that he's contacted or they've contacted him. Searchlight and the deal's been done. But where does that lie with your uh, truce, if that's the word, uh, with God, Joe Pierce? acting on behalf of Jerry Gable in an illegal way to bring down a registered legitimate political party. Where does that lie with your Catholicism? I mean, it's a con and a joke and a farce, you bogus holy Joe, right? Where does that lie with your beliefs now? You're involved and embarked upon subversive activity. You know, it, it's all a con and a farce. But anyway, anyway, so that's what I believe has happened. Nick Griffin in attempted murder, he puts uh, Joe Pierce's behaviour and uh, siding with the reactionaries, as he calls them, and they're the radicals. He puts that down to he wasn't the same person after being released from prison. Well, he most certainly wasn't. And this Catholicism had took hold of him, and that's why he sided with the reactionaries. But no, Nick, he sided with them because he was in... He got back involved in the NF to bring it down on behalf of Searchlight Magazine, Jerry Gable. You're probably now watching this video was saying, yes, you're right. 
Right, because that's what's happened. That's why he's being left alone. And as I've said, don't look too deep into Martin Webster attacking him. Right, there'll, there'll be a reason for that, trust me. Maybe it's to enhance Webster's street cred or divert attention from Joe Pierce being a searchlight asset. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't really matter. But that's what I believe has happened. He's rolled in prison. He's crumbled under the pressure, under the stress, like Mark collected. He found himself out in the wilderness and he couldn't deal with it. Right, and he's rolled to the enemy. That's what happened. Right, I don't care who believes me. That's what happened. Right. And um, Joe Pierce, I believe, while in jail, is uh, get being drawn to Catholicism and the rose that he be. It may indeed all be true. But like I've said, it, it sums him up as a very weak pace. He was only doing 12 months. Out of that, back in, in the 80s, you do, you've done two thirds, which is eight months. Christ, a shit in the shave, as they say in prison. Pardon the expression, but that's what they say. So it probably all fits in together now, Nick, doesn't it? That's why Joe Pierce was with the reactionaries. He was there on behalf of Jerry Gable of Searchlight Magazine to bring down the National Front. Okay, thank you.